Hey friends, welcome back to the Samurai version 3 tutorial and today we are covering the final touches of the Samurai. So we are just about done um, and now we just got to go over some of the details and last bit of refinement that you're able to do to get your Samurai looking as great as you want it to be. Now, um, as you can see, I've already done some shaping um, to this guy and he's on the display stand. So if you have a display stand, Go ahead and use that as it makes it a little bit easier to check out your samurai and see what needs to be fixed um, and to see what pose it'll be. I'll link this stand down in the description, um, but a clear stand like this is excellent. However, you can make stands out of wires or whatever materials you can. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this guy so far and what you can do uh, to get your samurai looking nice and proper. All right, so let's take a look at the samurai. Now you might not have noticed, but the left side relative to the samurai has been shaped with glue, but the right side has does not have any glue and it actually hasn't been shaped much outside of what was covered in the tutorials. Um, now you might not be able to notice a big difference, uh, but that's kind of the point. And this comment was brought up in the last tutorial, but it revolved around can the samurai um, be shaped well without the use of glue or methyl cellulose? As especially methyl cellulose, not everyone has access to. Um, and the answer is yes, you don't need glue. Um, it's not a requirement to shape the samurai well. However, it does have its limitations, um, which is why I still recommend shaping it with glue or methyl cellulose. And we'll just have a quick discussion about this. Now for my personal uses of these Samurais is I like to take these to conventions on display or travel to bring them home to show people and even sell them to others so they can use it as a decoration. Um, and for that reason, I like to use glue. And why is that? It's because it makes the model stronger, it'll last longer, and um, especially if I'm giving it to someone, I want it to keep its form for years. Um, and not fall apart. Um, so for a quick example, the leg here, um, the shaping's relatively the same. However, I just back coated using glue on the back and that makes the leg a little bit more rigid um, and it'll keep the curves that you folded into it as well as let you add a little bit more curve to it. So if I kind of bop the leg, it kind of keeps its same footing. However, without the glue, it's way more flexible. It can, you know, hyperextend, you know, it can twist. Um, it's not as rounded, even if I try to round it like this. Um, while it still can, it's gonna be harder for it to stay like this over a long period of time or with a lot of movement. Um, the other thing is with glue, you can achieve some features that aren't quite capable without. And so for example, the battle dress, I tucked it under the first layer of the leg, which is proper, and that's what you can do. And then I used glue to reinforce it in place so it can stay there. Um, and then manually I could curl the, the battle skirt. Now, as you can see, I did that on the same, I did the same thing on the other side without glue. And in place of it is a paper clip. And now obviously you don't want the paper clip to be there forever, but you could use a small clip to keep it in place. Um, and for me that works, but it's more cheating than using glue um, as it can achieve the same thing without the use of an external tool. However, if you keep this paper clip here for say a month or maybe two months, over time the paper is going to take this form. And when you take the paper clip off, the paper will still be trapped in there. Um, depending how well you, you know, got it in there and kind of locked it. Um, so that's the way you can do the same kind of thing without glue. However, over another year, there's a chance that paper is going to fall away and come untucked from the leg. And that's just because how gravity works and elasticity um, and paper wear, you know, paper doesn't last forever. Um, and even though just Unreu is really good, it's not 
completely durable, so I've had a lot of models that I folded without glue or methyl cellulose fall apart on me over the years, um, and I personally don't like that. So yes, I recommend using glue. I don't recommend using a lot of glue. Um, and now I'll get into some points on what you kind of want to look for and some of the mistakes I see people make. All right, so the first thing I'll talk about um, with this model are some of the mistakes people make. Um, so this more goes towards people who are shaping with glue. Um, and I think the most common mistake in shaping in general is using too much glue. So um, a lot of times, and I've made mis this mistake too, is the temptation to glue all the layers together. Um, and especially for this model, since it's supposed to resemble a person, and it's 3D, so you can kind of look at it from all sides. Um, you don't want it to be as flat as you would shape an insect. So if you were to glue all the layers together, it would lose a lot of dimension and it'd look way too thin. And even though that seems like a small detail, it goes a long way, um, especially in the legs, the arms, and the body. Um, so as you can see here, there's a decent amount of depth um, and that helps out when, you know, displaying the model um, and giving it kind of a form to take, as well as the arms. Even though the uh, layers might be spread out a little bit, it provides a little bit of a depth um, to it. And the next mistake um, when using glue is also um, if you apply too much of it, the paper, if it gets too wet, it'll start to wrinkle and you'll get weird spots um, where the different texture will be lost or you'll get glue stains, um, things like that that just kind of take away from the model. Uh, so you just want to be really aware of that. Um, also, I like in my models to be a good amount of flexibility still, even after gluing. And this is just a personal preference, but um, if you glue too much, the model is going to be kind of too crispy or you'll block out some spots so that you can no longer maneuver the origami. Um, and therefore it just kind of loses a lot of its uh, paper qualities, as well as if you want to make it into a certain pose, if you glue it too early, you might not be able to achieve that pose um, where the paper will start to break. Um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit more about some shaping details. All right, so if we're looking at this current samurai, um, he's in a little bit of a pose. Right now he's kind of taking an aggressive stance forward with his sword drawn and it's at his side ready, not quite uh, in a swinging position, but it, he's ready to draw into a guard or an attack. Um, but it's kind of a nonchalant, uh, very mild attitude type stance. And now these kind of details I feel are really important and um, I still need to work on this, uh, but it's also something I notice uh, the origami community um, could also use to their advantage. And um, if you look at a lot of traditional forms of art in human portraits or drawing, you'll notice that people always try to draw a dynamic pose um, and have proper proportions to do so. So I think trying to study that a little bit and apply that to your origami so that he's not just standing straight up doing absolutely nothing um, or like a T-pose, I guess. Um, you know, you can apply some character, some dynamic attributes and attitude to your model. Um, and while that's not a specific fold or detail, that's something you can look out for and it'll greatly enhance your final result. Um, as I've said, I still need to do this and this is not the completed model. I've actually, you know, just begun shaping this, I guess. Um, now, some of the B-roll you've seen in the past, they're actually in different poses. Since this is a tutorial, I'll try to keep a similar standard pose um, for you all to try, um, just so I, you know, I can show it as is. However, I'm still going to want to add some more detail in terms of the posing. Now, as towards actual tertiary, tertiary or textual um, details, you wanna make sure your model stays clean. So as you can see, I made sure the pleats are all locked in. I made sure that um, he's not, nothing's like sticking out too weirdly. On this side, you can see I've refined the fingers. Um, and even though the anatomy proportions aren't 100% correct, 
it's a lot better than leaving them unrefined, such as in this hand. Um, and also, the fingers aren't even grabbing the sword. Um, so that's a small detail um, not to be missed, um, which I will improve once I shape this side. And then also in terms of the leg, both of them are pretty okay. However, a lot of times if your leg is fully locked out like this, or it looks hyperextended, that's going to be an instant giveaway um, at a mistake or an unrefined finish. So make sure, you know, nothing's sticking out weirdly. Um, with the arms, your top arm isn't curved. It's more of a straight line. So really try to get straight lines there and then focus on the joint to be your elbow. Don't just take the long flap and curve it. Um, that's also going to be a giveaway a little bit at um, that your model isn't quite refined. Um, same things with the face. Now, obviously the face, when you fold it, you're gonna have to treat the paper um, or I guess, you know, fold the paper to get it in a right orientation. Um, naturally, it might sit up or it'll sit too far down, but pay attention to that and its relation to the neck as well as the hat. You don't want the hat to be slanted or tilted up um, or tilted down too far, but depending on your preference, um, go with that. Same thing with where the shoulders sit. So right now they're falling back a little bit and that's just because the paper weight is dragging it down. But really try to look at position of shoulders in reference to how you're trying to pose them and um, shape accordingly um, for that. But yeah, that pretty much covers most of the, you know, textual tertiary details. Um, other small things could be, you know, how's the blade or the sheath? Is it wrinkly? Like mine's a little bit wrinkly. Is it perfectly flat? Um, another detail could be, you know, how clean does the sword look in the hand? Obviously part of the structure helps with this clean line. You know, are you showing those clean lines? Are you free featuring them um, and whatnot? Uh, so take those all into account when you're finishing up your samurai. Um, I know this is quite a challenging fold for a lot of people. So I advise, you know, you probably want to nail it on your first go or make one practice one and then do one final one. So really take your time um, finishing up the final one. Normally I'll spend at least, you know, another like 30% of the total time uh, spent folding and shaping into just the final pose, uh, making sure it's exactly how I'd like it. And the pose is exactly how I want it as well. All right, but yeah, that pretty much covers all the tutorial. If you made it this far, again, once again, congratulations. Um, please share the fold with me so I can see it. I'd love to see it and I'll share it on my Instagram story. Um, so definitely hit me up uh, if you complete it or leave a comment below if you have questions regarding shaping um, or any of the topics I kind of discussed. If I didn't make sense on something, um, please let me know and I'll try my best to explain it to you. Um, but yeah, last thing for me to do at least I mentioned is I'm not completely done shaping this yet. So um, we're going to go do that and I'll show you what it looks like and it's going to change like this. And there we have it. We have our fully shaped completed samurai. Um, and as you can see, I still kept majority of the basic pose. However, I made it a lot more dynamic by giving him a direction with the sword. So no longer is he just nonchalant and static. He is a little bit more aggressive and it's like he's, you know, approaching or someone's approaching him. Um, but yeah, there we go. And I finished shaping the right side. So his fingers, the positioning, the sword, um, the arm, all that kind of stuff. The legs are more rigid so that when I have them on display, they're good to go. On the back side, I positioned his shoulders and made them so they're in line and that they'll stay but for the most part, um, I, there's still a little bit of wobble, but I mean, it's paper. Um, same thing with the back. Therefore, giving him a lot of detail. And I can say that I am happy with this result. Um, so hopefully 
you guys were able to take some tips um, from this video and apply it towards your samurai and whatever fold that you know you happen to want to shape very well um, but yeah that's pretty much it for this video um, great job for making it have a lot of fun shaping it's honestly my favorite part to shape the model into this pose even after doing the rest of the shaping in terms of the structures but yeah that'll be all for the samurai version 3 tutorial um, thank you so so much for watching and as well i did this all completely for free for you guys so please please share your photos with me if you fold it i'd love to see it and i also made a special demo video that will premiere right after this tutorial ends uh, for you to check out so if anyone asks you what you're folding you can reference them to that highlight video um, so they can check out the samurai and it's also for you guys so you guys can just check a cool montage of three different samurai i folded and see the different poses and the slight differences between the shaping but yeah thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video All this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm